The meeting is free to begin. Uh, Mayor Klein, may you please act as the chair? Uh, one moment, I need to pull up the agenda. <laughs> Thank you very much. And let me know if you'd like me to uh, resend it to you as well. No, I have it. It's, I was just deep in the document, so I need to get back up to the agenda portion at the top. Okay. Um, I will go ahead and call to order the Community Event Neighborhood Grant Distribution Subcommittee meeting of December 8th, 2021. Uh, hang on. Let me get to my my normal script. <clears throat> uh, because uh, we maintain, oh, one second, sorry about that. Wrong directory. Much easier if I have to write files. Okay. Much better. Um, <clears throat> so this subcommittee meeting um, is being held in accordance with, you know, oh. okay, um, here we go. Too many files. Okay, let's call to order the, the uh, special subcommittee community event and neighborhood grant distribution meeting uh, of December 8th, 2021. Uh, I'd like to remind participants of some procedural items for this meeting. During the meeting, participants were being muted when not, speak, when not speaking. If participants have a question or a comment, please use the raised hand feature. Speakers will be called upon to speak one at a time. Um, this, this subcommittee meeting is, is being conducted utilizing teleconference and electronic means as allowed by government code subdivision 54953-E and resolution number 1089-21, reaffirmed by the Sunnyvale City Council on November 16th, 2021. Members of the public may provide audio public comment by connecting to the teleconference meeting online or by telephone and use the raised hand feature to request to speak, star nine on your telephone. Uh, conference meeting details are available on the agenda. Captions are available to those accessing this meeting uh, via Zoom. Captions can be displayed or hidden using the live transcript button in Zoom. Um, first up is our roll call. Let me try to get all this correct. Uh, first up is our roll call. Uh, may we please have roll call? Council Member Dean. Here. Council Member Cisneros? Present. All are present uh, with uh, uh, Mayor Klein acting uh, in attendance for the vacancy. Thank you very much. And, you know, so, I, so I'm acting as chair to, to run this meeting, definitely. And so this is, um, let's say, calling in to fill uh, Mason's position. Uh, so definitely. Uh, as we're moving forward, conceivably, one of, one of the two of you can be chair if you want to take this over. Um, it's up to you. Uh, at this point, it's kind of just to make sure that we things are running smoothly. Uh, but we'll, we'll talk about that after we move a little bit farther. Uh, next up, of course, is public comment. Uh, so this is an opportunity for those who may have um, a comment on, on what's on our agenda today. Uh, so, well, well, I'm completely messed up today. Uh, members of the public will have an opportunity to address the subcommittee on topics um, not listed on the agenda. Actually, is this not listed? Yes, not listed on the agenda, just double checking. Um, not listed on the agenda, the section is limited to 15 minutes, maybe extended or continued after our general business. 
Uh, individuals are limited to one appearance with a maximum up to three minutes per speaker. Reminder the public, please raise your digital hand or dial star nine on your telephone if you wish to address uh, the subcommittee. And the, the clerk will then ask you to unmute your microphone when it's your turn to address uh, the subcommittee. Do we have any members of the public wishing to speak under oral communications or public communications? None at this time. Okay. Uh, we'll move on to our consent, uh, consent calendar. And this is- I, an I move the- oh, sorry, on, So we, we actually have to do the same thing for the public. Since the remainder no, of virtual setting- pause for me off, sorry about that. I will ask the public to use a virtual raised hand but feature or dial star nine on your telephone to indicate that they wish to speak. Uh, the clerk will then ask you to unmute your microphone when it's your turn to address the subcommittee. Clerk, do we have any members of the public wishing to speak on a consent calendar item? None at this time. Okay. And I will take a motion. Um, Council I Member move Dean. the consent calendar. Thank you. I second. Thank you. Can you please conduct a roll call vote? Council Member Cisneros? Yes. Council Member Dean? Yes. The motion passes two to zero. Thank you. Uh, we'll now move on to our general business, item 21-1104, review of the calendar year 2021 grant and consideration of the calendar year 2022 community event and neighborhood grant program applications. Is there a staff report? Yes, there is. I think Ricky's going to start the presentation. Great. Okay. Okay, all right. So good afternoon, Mayor Klein and Council Member Cisneros and Dean. My name is Tracy Gott, Recreation Services Manager, and I oversee the community events and neighborhood grants along with the uh, quarterly neighborhood association meetings that we have here. So next. So this afternoon, we're going to provide a review of the 2021 grants provide an overview of the 2022 grant process, the outreach we've provided and the applications that we have received and offer recommendations for the subcommittee to consider. Next. So currently we are nearing the end of this calendar year grant cycle. And this was the first full year of our transition from a fiscal year to a calendar year. For So for those of council members who are joining us this year, you've missed the confusion of the last few years and we look forward to just doing one grant cycle per year on the calendar year. So staff reached out and checked in with all of our grantees midway through the calendar year and then just another month ago to get an update on where they were with their grants. Those that have an asterisk next to them under the reimbursement column means that they have already returned their grant paperwork and they have been reimbursed or in the process of getting reimbursed. And the other ones that don't have the asterisk They've held their events and they're completing their paperwork and will be processing for reimbursement. So this year, while not all of the funds were spent, all of the grantees utilized the majority of the funding to hold some type of event or program. And we estimate that just under $33,000 will be reimbursed to all of our grantees. Last year, out of the $34,000 that was allocated, we had 24,000 that was reimbursed. So this is a good improvement from last year to this year. Next slide. So the first two bullets on this slide highlight the guidelines that were updated at the August subcommittee meeting. Um, if you recall, we put in our applications that the applicants must be registered as an active neighborhood association by the time of their proposed event. And then we also included in our applications that reimbursements will be processed between July and December of each year. Additionally, this slide includes a third item, the budget supplement. So upon full council approval of the grants, staff will be um, recommending a budget modification to add $34,000 to the current year budget. This will make funding available for the 2022 grant year cycle. And then funding for the 2023 grant cycle will be proposed in the fiscal year 22-23 budget. Um, so that this just allows that the amount of funding is known before we submit grants. In prior years, we used to have a statement in our grants saying that, um, you know, grant awards 
may change based on council funding. So this way it ensures that there's always funding ahead of time before we go out and solicit grants. Next slide. So the application window for the 2022 cycle was extended from six to eight weeks this year. It opened up on September 3rd and closed October 29th. We also moved to do an online application process this year and we had some good positive feedback um, and I applaud all of our grantees for using our system and giving us feedback on ways that we could improve the process for next year as well. We made an effort to re-engage some of our neighborhood groups that haven't submitted in the past and also try to reach out to new grantees. To do this, we utilized um, the following methods to let community organizations and neighborhood associations know about the funding opportunity. We provided reminders at the quarterly neighborhood association meetings. We shared with other city departments to pass along to their partners and community nonprofit members that they work with. And additionally, we posted on Nextdoor, we included it on the city's website, you know, did multiple Facebook posts, emailed our past recipients, and then also had this read as council announcements. Next. So this is our summary of grant requests from the past three years. And so we're happy to report that for this grant cycle, we received 15 applications for neighborhood grants and 10 applications for the community events, which is a 67% increase from our prior cycle. Next. So moving on to the grants that we did receive, this is a lot of information on this slide. So you can see a more detailed summary in your grant app, in your grant packet that was sent out under attachment one, the neighborhood grant program summary. Uh, and we'll call out, there were a few mistakes in the original grant packet we sent out. One being on this slide, we updated um, downtown Sunnyvale Heritage District. We updated their project title from Holiday Arches to Find Love in Sunnyvale. And additionally, for some reason, downtown Sunnyvale Heritage District's budget, um, their budget attachment was included in multiple um, neighborhood association projects. So we went through and we resubmitted a packet that had the updated budgets to you yesterday. So hopefully that is all clear now, but we can also answer questions at the end if you have questions. Um, so on this slide, you can see we had 15 grant applications that were received. We had five new applicants this year, Downtown Sunnyvale Heritage District, Heritage Association, Heritage Group, Murphy Park, Ladies Who Lunch, and Sunnyvale Moms Group. We had three returning grantees, which by returning, we meant that they did not receive funding last year or did not apply, but did apply this year. And then we had seven prior grantees that all received funding last year. So two, the last two on the list, Ladies Who Lunch and Sunnyvale Moms Group um, are not being recommended for funding under a neighborhood association as they really don't meet the definition of a neighborhood association. They're more of a citywide event, but we will be reaching out to those groups to um, talk to them, see if we can support in some way, some of the events that they're doing in the city. So on the Last line here on the slide, you can see the total funding requested was 19,000, a little over 19,000. And the budget for neighborhood grants is 13,000. So what we did was just try to reduce, um, you know, the amount of funding that each neighborhood association asked for so that everybody received um, some funding in some fashion. Um, I think the biggest difference you might notice is if you look at Heritage Group Murphy Park, they asked for 1,500 and we only allocated $750 for funding for them. And that was really because they were serving, well, based on their application, they were serving a small number of households compared to some of the other groups that had applied. So next slide. Now we move on to the community events that were submitted. And again, we had 10 agencies that applied and on attachment to the community event grantee summary, you can see kind of the more detailed information along with them. We had six new grantees this year, Chamber of Commerce, San Miguel PTA, South Asian Cultural Association of Sunnyvale, California University, National Alliance on Mental Illness and Sunnyvale Arts Commission. We had, um, 
the last three on the list, California University, National Alliance on Mental Illness and Sunnyvale Arts Commission were not being recommended for funding. California University, the budget that they submitted did not align with their projected event costs and their application did not provide a lot of details um, about where the event would be and other costs that they would be considering when they hold this event. National Alliance on Mental Illness, they did not fully complete their application. They just kind of completed the first section and left the rest blank. And Sunnyvale Arts Commission is not eligible to, eligible to apply as they are a nonprofit or they're not a nonprofit or not for profit organization. Staff will work with them to determine how we can support their event next year. But they're actually holding their event this year um, with our support at the library in the Gingerbread Village, um, I think is underway and being planned. And actually, we'll have to give you more information on when it's gonna be available for display. So here, the total amount that was requested was just under $80,000. And again, that exceeds recommended funding that we have of 21,000. So we went through and reduced the amount of funding that all applicants asked for. We tried to make it as equitable as we could. And basically, you know, if events were happening in multiple days, such as Sunnyvale Downtown Association, we're doing a jazz and beyond in the summer series, it's happening multiple days, we would give them a little bit more funding than those events that were happening only on one or two days. So the total event or the total amount of funding that we have recommended is $21,000 for them. The next slide, so that actually brings us to the end of our recommendation is that the, we ask that the subcommittee recommends council to approve $34,000 in grant applications per the funding amounts outlined in the 2022 grant application summary table that you received or per these two previous slides. So this concludes our report, but please let us know if you have any questions. Okay, uh, before I pass it to the subcommittee to raise, to answer questions uh, or ask questions, uh, let me just, let me give a quick summary uh, from my standpoint and, and from a process standpoint, uh, definitely it's up to the subcommittee to kind of look at the validity of, of the applications that are in front of you, take a look at the staff recommendations. Uh, one of the things that, that can be done uh, conceivably is adjusting the numbers uh, from a, and all this is a budget supplement or a budget, you know, budget modifications being requested, mainly because we're now doing this mid-year to some degree. And so this, this kind of uh, changes the process slightly. That being said, um, one question I did have for staff from the beginning was when we talked about this and I, and I served on, on the subcommittee for several years, we talked about increasing those amounts, um, like a cost of living or something of that nature. This is the, what's being requested now is the same as last year's, is 2021 or this year, depending on how you look at it. Is that true? Yes. So right now there is no budget increase. It's $34,000. So it's kind of been the same for the last few years. Okay. Okay. So that is, so in, and if you go back and if you take a look at, and either during the transition, there was some, some change, but conceivably from a budget modification standpoint, as you're doing recommendations, conceivably the subcommittee could request, let's say a, a modest increase or, or conceivably having staff go back and making sure that on a yearly basis, it goes up CPI or something of that nature. Now that's spread between the two committee, two, two funds, um, community grants and neighborhood grants is it's kind of up to staff, but I do think that that's important. Uh, and then from a process standpoint, asking questions of the different applications, uh, either going through item by item and looking at, you know, that those costing figures, uh, a lot of times, and, and you have the same issue this year is limited funds and, and not that, you know, it'd be nice to be able to provide these funds to all the applicants, but you have limited funds and then how they're broken down with um, to the different areas is to a certain degree, you know, staff's recommendation. And it's based upon, I'll say, past performance and also kind of um, enabling 
um, and trying to encourage, let's say, new neighborhood associations, or as staff said, um, some neighborhood associations that have not been as active, trying to get pull them back into the fold and, and creating more community there. So, so um, I'll leave it to the subcommittee now to ask questions. After we get to questions, then we'll go to public comment and then come back and start doing recommendations. So, so first up is Council Member Dean. Uh, thank you, Mayor, and uh, I thank you for that information, actually, because that did preempt actually some of the questions I was about to ask you. Uh, but before I go into the questions, I did want to, as normal, I mean, fantastic job staff on this. I think this is one of those things, especially that can be so difficult because of how many things need to be balanced, uh, threading that needle, and staff did a fantastic job. I mean, I looked through the packets, looked through the applications, and uh, you can see the thoughtfulness as to why those figures are the way that they are. Uh, I think the first thing I want to do is uh, this, I'm going to throw back to the mayor actually for uh, just historical context. In the past, uh, when you were on the subcommittee, how much would these figures actually get shifted around during this iteration of the meeting? Is it typical to see those fluctuate or is it, uh, and within that question, when those figures fluctuate, does it stay the same within the two categories or do you also sometimes see figures maybe drop in total for one category and then raise a little bit for the other category? Or is it that if we're gonna shift figures, we should still keep the categories having the same dollar figure tied on the net level? It's it's mainly in the past been within the same category. So this is the breakdown between neighborhood grants. So kind of a sum total for neighborhood grants and a sum total for community grants, and then adjustments within those groups as opposed to um, a, a, you know, moving money from one fund to the other. And, and normally, okay. you know, community grants in general are given more, let's say more funding because they're, they're addressing a wider community. Many of the neighborhood grants mm. are focused in, you know, it's, it's trying to get a group, a neighborhood association, uh, a, a group of residents in a much smaller portion of the, of the community to come together. And just from a, um, just from a, the number of people attending many of these events, it's in the you know 40s and 50s as opposed to the hundreds or thousands when you get into mm -hmm. some of the community grants. Mm, okay, I appreciate that. And then I think a follow-up question to it is, I know when I was looking through everything for today that obviously we would be making determinations on the level of funding for each of the applications, but uh, given the conversation you had just had before we went into questions, is it within our purview during today's meeting to also request increases to the grant total uh, for the next budget cycle? We're maybe even going beyond the, I believe, 34,000 that it's at right now. Is that something where we can say, hey, we want to ask council for more money? Uh, or does that happen separately during the budget cycle? So I'll let staff ans ask, answer that, but I have my own opinion. So I'll, I'll let them give their okay. best opinion first. I think so in the past, the, the last time it was increased, it happened at the subcommittee level and was mm. um, created. It was a presentation from staff and then subcommittee voted it up to council. Um, we didn't, you know, this is in, we haven't seen this kind of uh, interest lately between COVID and some of the other things. So it's mm. it caught us a little bit flat footed, but it's great to see that there's uh I'm, and I'm hoping that it's a trend that we see both more neighborhood interest and we're even in, in the presentation, Tracy explained that we have three new um, neighborhood groups that are hopefully going to be coming online and we're trying to, we're trying to increase that. Um, and then also some of the community uh, events are new and we look forward to um, spreading that around. So I think, I think it would be fine. I think you could do it as part of this process. And then it could mm. be considered because technically speaking, it's still running a, a similar trajectory with the budget process. So you can put through, put it through and we could um, maybe even create, uh, update the report for council to be like, one is to approve so that we can at least approve the funding for the grant. And then the other is to move the budget item so we can have separate items when they, when council uh, um, hears this full council to make sure that it's bifurcated so it doesn't get hung up for one thing or the other. Ah, okay, interesting. And then, but what you're saying is in the past when that in type of increase happened, it was its own agenda item to the subcommittee that had its own staff presentation as well? 
Yeah, they went through okay. and explained what the history was and how they were coming up short. Um, and then it was it was it was doubled. Each each of these grant areas was doubled in I think it was 18 going into 2019. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, well, then, I mean, I wouldn't want to bypass the process that's typically been done because I think it is worthwhile to have that level of, uh, you know, discussion and investment by staff. Uh, in terms of the Brown Act, can we even discuss something like that right now? Or would I need to, like, if I wanted to, per se, maybe have a discussion at a later date and request staff to do a presentation at a later date, and maybe that even means reconvening the subcommittee at a, at a later date once we make all the determinations tonight about uh you know, funding, locking that in, but then having a discussion about increase if we should and to what level we should increase the entire grant. Um, but then, yeah, keeping that separate, I guess, from everything we're deciding today. But all that, obviously, and I think this is a question I'll actually pose to staff right now. In terms of staff time and bandwidth, is that something that would be worthwhile? Or do you think y'all are kind of strapped right now? And if that's the case, then I'm more than happy to push that discussion to next year or a later time. I think a, a good approach would be to um, that we could bring forward uh, and when we start the process for next year, we can kick it off with with a proposed increase based on based on this year's um, interest mm. in anticipation for at least the same, if not more, and have it run a similar. They ran it. They didn't run it separate. They ran it concurrent with the regular process. Okay. Um, so increasing. So when we come back together in August, we can bring back a, a recommendation to the subcommittee from staff based on at least this year uh, to increase um, funding levels for each of the pots. Ah, uh, okay. No, I would, and honestly, I'd be interested in that. I'll defer as well to what my one colleague on the subcommittee thinks. And then obviously the mayor, I would love to get your input as well as to what you think, but yeah, I would, I would be really interested in pursuing that process that you just outlined. Uh, okay, and then I guess going into well, my before, actual Before questions. you leave that, before you leave that comment, I would just say, okay. I think it is worthwhile to bring it up with the city manager. And uh, ultimately, okay. I think it, it should be part of the budget workshop. I think this is a, this would be a 10 minute discussion. And I think, you know, but it is worthwhile from, from the budget workshop to, to bring it up at that point. So when we're start talking about budget modifications and study issues, kind of in preparation for budget and the budget workshop. I think that's, it's, it's kind of a, a general budget, you know, budget modification that, that we want to look at from a council standpoint moving forward. So it's, it's, I don't think we need to wait for this process to go through or be kicked off next year and have a recommendation from the subcommittee. I do think that because as Damon was talking about amount with the amount of interest and increased interest. And I do think that, that the, we, we made an effort to try to raise the bar quite a bit to allow more, um, allow more funding. You know, if there were, there are multiple years where we're asking for, we want another $1,700 or we want another, you know, $1,500 above the, above what was um, allotted from the budget standpoint. So the subcommittee came out with recommendations of, okay, this is what's allotted, here's how we divide it, and we need it, and we would like an additional X amount. Uh, but I do think from a kind of going forward, so just seeing the amount of interest, this is an issue for the budget, you know, the budget study issue workshop and the, and the budget workshop itself. So I'll leave it at that. Okay. Go ahead. No, Thank I appreciate you. that. No, I appreciate that. And then in that case, if you think it's appropriate to do that on a more you know, closer timeline, I'm completely fine with that. Uh, I think my, I, I assumed that it would necessitate a meeting of the subcommittee, which is why I thought then I'll defer to staff for their bandwidth. But if we, if it's completely appropriate to just go to council as a whole, then I'm totally fine with that. Uh, although that raises a question in my head, which is remind me in terms of the timeline of these grants, if, uh, I assumed that if we did any increases to the grant in total, uh, that it you know it'd be kind of after the fact, and that whatever we decide to fund tonight and at what level, if there was more money coming, we would miss it. But is that not the case? If we were to do it during the budget, you know, the typical budget process, could we then even plan for funding some of the things that are before us tonight at higher levels, uh, or? Is it separate and we need to fund whatever we can fund tonight? And then it would be for the following cycle that we would get more money. 
I'll leave it to Damon, but I have my opinion, but I'll, I'll leave it to staff to answer if they want first. Um, I, I think like Mayor Klein was saying, I mean, it's worth a conversation. Uh, when we're going through the budget process for this year, it would technically be for those, it would be for the next grant cycle. So it'd be um, beginning 22, 23. So yeah. um, what we're doing today is approving grants that technically start um, or follow the calendar year 22. Um, okay. Some of which would, would start uh, or, or happen before um, the fiscal year, um, which would be approved as part of the budget. So if you, if you brought it up, yeah. yeah. So I think it would be uh, an increase for the following year, um, but could be discussed at, at this um, during this budget and study uh, session workshops. Uh, okay. And I know the mayor, you said you had comments a lot. I would be really open to hearing them. Yeah, I think, I think that makes sense. So it's, it's dealing with the, the allotments you have here. And, you know, if, if it's really difficult, then you can conceivably make a recommendation that, that you might want to go slightly higher. Uh, you know, if, if you think that some of the funding is underfunded in some area, then conceivably you could, you know, allot the 34,000 or say a lot 35,000 and say, okay, we want to split the extra thousand between these or these few. Um, I would try to stay within the, the numbers that you have available to us, the, the 34,000 that's allotted here. And then basically when we talk about the budget workshop or, or the study issue budget modification workshop, whichever one this will really come up in, at that point say, you know, we want to see that this number increases by CPI and conceivably by some jump and then by CPI yearly. So just from, just for looking at next year's grant cycle. So that's just my recommendation. Okay, I appreciate that. And I think that makes total sense. Uh, okay, now I'll finally jump into some of my questions on the specific ones. Thank you all for bearing with me through that. Um, and so I think my, my first question is that I noticed uh, there's definitely a large delta for and I'm jumping around a bit, so I'll go to proposed community event funding, uh, which is I noticed obviously the largest delta will be, is on the Art and Wine Festival between what they requested and what's being recommended. Uh, I was just wondering if you could tell me a little bit more about you know staff thinking on it. Not saying I disagree at all, just curious about what you know where the determinant why three thousand. So I think our thinking around that is that the Art and Wine Festival is like a two day event usually. Mm -hmm. So those events that were only one or two days tended to get a little less funding than those that were multiple days, like the summer concert series that happens over a period of a couple of months. So there's no strict formula, but it was just, how do we give support all the events that happen one, mm. two times, three times? Okay, now that makes total sense. And then similar question with the uh, Diwali celebration, celebration. Uh, obviously requesting 7,000, getting 3,000. Uh, what were the factors in that determination of 3,000 being the final number? Same as, you know, there are going to be a one day event um, this year. Mm -hmm. uh, they're a new event. And so kind of based on the budget that they provided us, we felt that $3,000 would be a good amount to support them. It's not quite what they're looking for, but again, to support the numbers that they were bringing in. Um, same thing. Mm, okay, definitely. And then uh, I know that the Downtown Association obviously submitted quite a number of applications. Can you talk to me a bit about when you guys were looking through, was there any thought as to uh, the net total that we're also giving to Downtown Association or was it really just event by event uh, and whatever they're getting in total just happens to be that total? So we haven't looked, I mean, I know they do submit Actually, in the past year, this year, I think they went up one event. So I think last year, mm -hmm. they did three. So this year, they did four. And so we just kind of looked at the scope of their events that they were doing and the variety. So mm -hmm. um, each one was kind of unique in and of itself, providing a different experience for the community. So we took it kind of on that each event basis. Mm -hmm. Okay, definitely. Um, I believe those were all my questions for now, but I appreciate the answers. Uh, I'll send it over to my other colleague now and then we'll let the discussion go from there. Thank you. Okay. Council Member Cisneros. Thank you. Um, yeah, I wanted to comment on kind of our, that was going to be my main question is 
like if we wanted to increase the budget on this, um, if we could. And my thinking around that was specifically we're coming out of um, this pandemic or opening up and we're seeing some something we want to see happen, which is uh, community groups and neighborhoods, they want to get together um, and they're making applications, uh, increasing their applications, which is awesome and getting more people involved. So it was like, yeah, how do we get this higher? I'm very interested in continuing with that process and pursuing that to see if that would be something council would be interested in. So that's where I stand on that too. And council member Dean actually hit on um, pretty much all of my questions as well about the actual applications. Um, specifically, I was thinking of, um, and maybe this is just a general, like how other people um, in my position or other commissioners have felt about kind of taking like the downtown association, for example, submitting multiple applications and kind of seeing that almost as like, is that almost, I don't know if this makes sense, but like one pot of money, um, not one pot, but taking into account that they're getting a much larger percentage of the total budget here. Um, or is it really just, we look at all of these events individually, if that makes any sense, if I could say that in an easier way. Right, so it, it does. I mean, when you break it down, um, Sunnyvale Downtown Association is getting about $9,000. Given we have 21,000, they are getting the majority of the funding. Um, I think in this case, we just looked at it kind of, as I mentioned, like on an event basis, because mm -hmm. each event was very separate than what they were doing. So um, but it's something that we could look at in future years or the subcommittee can talk about other ways to really just do it per agency. Um, you know, we've been happy that we have community agencies stepping up this year and applying to do some new events. So it's great to see and something that we can work on refining. Yeah. Damon, did you have a comment? Um, yeah, uh, the, you'll notice that on the one day events that are offered or that were proposed by Sunnyvale, we, we downgraded those um, a lot through conversation and tried to keep a balance of those events that ha happen multiple times. Um, so uh, that was one way we tried to, we tried to make a little bit of sense out of it. So the wine stroll historically has been like one day and then the tree lighting's one day. Um, the other things there's anywhere from, from six uh, or more events on jazz and beyond individually, as well as the summer series. So there's 12, 12 occurrences to bring the community together um, between those two events. And it's one agency, but it's, it's, the, mul it's the multitude of events they're doing. So it was, it was tough this year because of what a great uh, outpouring of requests we had relative to the, to the bottom line dollar. So um, yeah, that was, that was staff's attempt at it. And, and we, we are open to, um, subcommittees recommendations on any kind of changes that they'd like to make or see going forward for final council approval. And then I had a quick comment. So, you know, I, I look at the number of events that the downtown association runs is as kind of the, the big indicator here to a certain degree, uh, you know, and if you look at kind of last year's, and I think on a yearly basis, since I've been on the subcommittee, uh, the downtown association has always um, gotten the lion's share or a good portion of, of the community grant funds, mainly because uh, the historical performance of, of bringing the community together. I think it's, you know, it adds a lot. It draws people from around the city to downtown. So it's good for businesses as well as it just, you know, there's a lot of longtime residents that look forward to that. And I think that that's been a very active sort of thing. Um, you know, last year, uh, if you look at last year's numbers, they were, they, they had close to 15,000 um, as far as that percentage. So, so this is actually a big drop um, percentage wise of, of the funds that from that normally I'll say normally, and it varies from year to year, but I would say normally um, it's 10,000 or more. So this is actually under what what we'd probably normally be giving them, mainly because I think, at least from a staff recommendation standpoint, the number of other community events that have applied. And just maybe as a question to Damon, um, I don't remember if the 
if the art and wine festival normally applied in the past. I think it was seen as completely mm -hmm. a, a for-profit event, as far as I remember, as opposed to what, what the new CEO of the chamber is trying to do is making it more of a community Correct. building yeah. event. That had a couple of things to that, um, Mayor. Uh, one was the timing of the grant cycle versus the timing of the um, Art and Wine Festival historically it was in June and it almost didn't include the month of June <laughs> the way the cycles ran because because it, it followed the budget cycle and it was like it was while it was while the budget was being adopted the Art and Wine Festival was happening then there was also some nuances that we cleaned up in terms of qualifications with the previous sub uh, committee members which included Mayor Klein that had to do with fundraising for not for profit, for profit, and some some things of that nature, and then and then bringing that um, full circle, uh, where they've changed, they're moving in a different model or direction, and also partnering with the local businesses and things to run that event. And it's more about bringing people down than it is about um, making a dollar for the chamber. So all of these things came together, but but again, that's where um, we're we're in we're in this predicament where we have more people and, and that's one of the things we've been trying to do is to, you know, uh, remove barriers to entry. We've increased the dollar, the per um, applicant dollar amount to the neighborhoods from 1000 to 1500 previously. So a lot of little things have led to what we were hoping would someday be a problem is that we've got a lot of um, interest and people trying to do things in the community and we just need to um, react going forward. So, yeah, thank you. Thank you, Damon. Back to Alyssa. Yeah, um, that's so interesting. That raised a question. So when you say that the chamber is looking to make that uh, art and wine more bringing community together rather than um, make money for the chamber to you know, put it blunt, how, what does that look like? What does that change? that is proposed or do you have a, a sense into that? So when I talked to Don Mayer, I believe of the chamber about the event, it's kind of scaling back the size of the event and who they're mm. reaching out to. And I guess, and I have not attended before, but it used to be more just other cities, other places joining, but it's more about Sunnyvale and the community feel than rather making it a large scale. Um, and one reason is they also find with the pandemic, their budget was a little limited. So they're also trying to restructure how they're doing it and kind of reframing their mission. Great, that's that's very helpful insight. And I noticed that like, since you brought that up, it kind of clicked in my head like, oh, this year they did um, local restaurant food vendors, for example, which was a really cool addition um, from my perspective. So I, I appreciate that. And that it makes a lot more sense to me why, why they're coming and trying bringing the city more into this to have some buy-in with it as well. Um, I had just wanted to talk a little bit more about the Mid-Autumn Festival and hear, get, get some more perspective on the performance of that event in the past. Um, so I, I'm not super familiar with that, so I wanted to know more. So that is being proposed by Self Help for the Elderly and they're a partner, um, they're actually based out of the Sunnyvale Senior Center. They had proposed doing the Mid-Autumn Festival in the prior year and due to the pandemic, they weren't able to hold it. So their idea is just to bring um, the festival to the Senior Center and include um, performances from either local or San Francisco performance artists that they have connections with and provide an event for the seniors and the community around this area. Yeah, yeah, I get that. But has it been? It's the first time for them to oh mid autumn festival. Yeah. Oh, the brand maybe, new. Maybe I didn't get that because it says prior year. Maybe prior that's because they, they did apply last year, but they didn't hold their event due to the pandemic. So I see. They're a returning grantee in that sense that the application is coming back, but they actually didn't get to hold their event. Okay, that, that part didn't quite, quite, that part got crossed in my head. So that, that was my one thing. And I wanted to, you know, also um, express my, with, with Diwali, they had their first one this year. I went, it was very successful. And uh, as far as like a new grantee goes, like I'm paying special mind to that as I, we've kind of seen that pilot 
And I think that's kind of unique. Um, seeing something before we go ahead and do it, it's not an unknown quantity. And um, I just really appreciated what that what that meant to the community and uh, and the value there. So that was one thing where I'm thinking, like, I know it's not where they want it, but um, you know, I, that just kind of stood out to me. But um, I think that those were my my questions on it. I've really appreciated this con. con oh, okay. No, no, I understand that. Great. Yeah, that, that concludes my questions. Okay. And I and I just wanted to uh, also comment as far as self-help for the elderly, they have been having kind of um, their their moon festival events within their organization. And so from the from the grant subcommittee, we approved basically, yes, we you know, we, we before COVID or be, you know, we approved that they would hold their first kind of community-wide event. Uh, because they've been doing it within their own group and having, you know, a certain amount of music and everything else. And, and so this was seen as to pull more of the community in and then COVID happened, of course. So uh, they weren't able to have their event, but um, they've, they've had at least at a smaller scale in the past, just for, for that, for your knowledge. Uh, Council Member Dean. Thank you. Uh, and again, thank you for the context. I think uh, before I launch into some more discussion, I had a quick process question, which is, uh, if I wanted to spur a discussion about shifting some of these numbers around, would it be better to do it free form and kind of put that out now and then talk about it? Or should I make a specific motion and then go into discussions on something like that? I would wait until after public comment and then yeah. basically uh, what, you know, and just from a process standpoint, when we were back in person, uh, what, what the subcommittee normally did was play around with okay, here's the one or two that I would like to adjust and kind of go off with their own numbers and then come back together as opposed, and then, you know, it's a little bit easier in person where you're drawing on a whiteboard and saying, okay, this is, I would like to decrease this and, and increase that. And of course here you have no tiebreakers. So, so you and Alyssa have to, um, to figure that out on your own. Uh, but, but that's kind of the process is, okay, I'm fine with all these. And then you, what, what normally occurred was here's a few that I think really should be increased. Here's a few that I think should, could conceivably be decreased. And then um, let's say horse trading on what the appropriate numbers were. So. Okay. 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 I appreciate that. Uh, and yeah, I guess I am sad that we're not in person because that sounds like it would have been a very collaborative experience, but thank you. Then I'll, I'll delay till after public comment. Okay. Any other comments? Seeing none, I will go ahead and open the public hearing for this specific item. Since we remain in a virtual setting, I'll ask the public to use the virtual raised hand feature or dial star nine on their telephone to indicate that they wish to speak. The city clerk will, uh, the clerk will then ask you to unmute your microphone when it's your turn to address the, the subcommittee. Uh, clerk, do we have any members of the public who wish to speak on this item? And looks like we do. Um, oh, so sorry about that. My, I was on mute. Um, yeah. Yes, we do. Uh, Valerie, uh, I'm going to allow you to speak, and you have three minutes. Uh, you are good to go. Good afternoon, Mayor, Council Members, Tracy and Damon. My name is Valerie Suarez. I am the chair of the Snail Neighborhood Association. I wish to thank you for the opportunity to apply and receive fundings for our neighborhoods of 1400 homes. Pre-COVID, we used to host the largest and the most successful community neighborhood event in the San Diego Sunnyvale. Our national night out was attended by 200 plus members of neighborhood north of the, north of the train track. With the impact of COVID and with the guidance of staff, we have adapted our community offerings from a neighborhood party to three community activities where less than 50 mass participated safely to events, to three events that we had this year. We hope to be returning to offering our barbecue potluck national night out, very popular with a band, dancing on the streets, our traditional ice cream trucks, our children face painting, young adult activities, book exchange, 
Tabons and Chair Rental and many city departments represented at our event. I encourage the subcommittee members to support the neighborhood grants and if possible, support the increase of fundings towards community events. As I am sure you understand and you have seen, prices have increased tremendously from our previous budgets that we have submitted. You can easily see that even our bottom cost was greater than the amount that we had requested. Nevertheless, we do understand that there are more neighborhoods who are requesting fundings, and we will appreciate and gratefully, thankfully, um, and thankful to all of the fundings that you will generously disperse to our community. Again, thank you very much and uh, look forward to the rest of the meeting. Thank you, Valerie. doesn't look like there is anyone else who wishes to speak. So I'll close the public hearing and bring it back to the subcommittee. Uh, Councilman Redeem. Thank you. Actually, can I make a point of personal privilege? Sure. Uh, I've drinking quite a bit of coffee and I find myself in need of a, can I request a quick recess of maybe seven to 10 minutes? Apologies to can, everybody. Can but we, can we do six? Know. Can we give you six minutes and make it two thirty? Let's do, let's do that. Okay. We will thank, thank you. Sorry, everyone. <laughs> we, we will take a quick recess for six minutes. Be back here at two thirty.
Sorry, Mayor Klein, I'm back. Uh, okay. Thank you. Thank you to the subcommittee and to staff. Sorry about that again. Okay, we'll go ahead and reconvene. And uh, Councilman Rodine, did you want to start discussions? Yeah, I did. Sure. Thank you. Sure. Uh, and I'll just, I'll keep the discussion more open and free form to at least mimic what we can for that collaborative environment short of being in person. So uh, I guess to my one other subcommittee colleague, if we come to a conclusion there, we can then, I'm happy to just make a motion and finality. Uh, but the discussion I want to have is I'm, I'll say I'm happy with staff's recommendations on the uh, neighborhood grants. And so don't see any direct need to touch that yet, but uh, for community events, I did, and sorry, let me just get my notes opened here. Um, I did want to shift the funding around just slightly. And so what I was hoping to do uh, essentially was uh, increase the funding slightly to the Diwali event, uh, where I, I would like to see that be brought up to 3,500. And to do that uh, offset by either uh, decreasing mid-autumn festival by 500, which I'd be open to and I have rationale for that I'll go into in a second, or potentially doing an aggregate deduction of 500 between the different downtown association events. And so my thinking here is uh, either because of, uh, when it comes to the Diwali event, I believe it's a new event. I, we attended it this year. It was a fantastic event. I mean, when you look at the application and what they put forward, there was an attendance of almost 2000 people, if not more. And so uh, it definitely has a big impact citywide. Uh, but on top of that, you know, it's the only thing that's really happening in the city that highlights our South Asian and Desi culture. And I think uh, that is one that is extremely important, uh, one that I don't believe has really gotten the recognition and needs citywide in a long time. And so happy to see that change happening. And I think that this is a priority for the city to fund and to better fund. Uh, they're asking for quite a bit. We can't give them everything, but I believe increasing it at least to 3,500 gets us there. Uh, and so my thinking with the other ones is that when it comes to downtown, uh, obviously we're doing quite a plethora of events with the downtown and uh, while well, I support all of them and I think we should, it's good that we're funding them. Uh, I think there's a little bit of wiggle room to you know, decrease a little bit from every event and uh, push that over. Uh, but then on the flip side uh, with the Mid-Autumn Festival, when you look at that, I think it's a fantastic event. Also a new one, I mean, uh, while we can't give everything, I do think a thousand goes a longer way with them. Uh, and when you look at the actual application, they have an expected attendance of 200 people uh, versus the Diwali event of you know 2,000. So I think it's uh, you know totally appropriate to shift the priority there to match it a tiny bit. But just throwing that out, would love to make this more of an open and free flowing discussion. So uh, looking forward to hear what my colleague has to say on that. Thank you. And before I go to Councilmember Cisneros. Uh, uh, let me ask a quick question of staff, and I know, know that there's general planning for a multicultural event. Uh, and can you give a quick update on that? Because I think that there, conceivably, there is some overlap, not specifically on Diwali or or the Moon or the Moon um, Autumn Festival, uh, but would be it'd be good to hear what staff's current plan is for the multicultural. Event. Yeah, the the, um, the multicultural event, which we haven't come up with a, a, a more snappy name yet, but is in the preliminary stages and would um, be aiming at representing um, both performance-based and, and um, hands-on art experiential um, uh, activities that would both highlight um, those things, uh, the Diwali uh, things from the Diwali uh, culture, as well as the autumn um, and other cultures or um, uh, represented uh, community um, here in Sunnyvale. That's uh, we're, we're, we're between sometime May to September or October in terms of our timing of that event. So we're still um, dialing that in. And then we'll, once we once we pin down the date, then we're going to really um, start accelerating the planning. Okay, thank you. Uh, Council Member Cisneros. Yeah, thank you. And thank you for uh, bringing up the multicultural event. Um, that, that'll be an interesting thing to throw in in future years, I think. Um, yeah, that, that's interesting. And like I said before, like I, I was really impressed with Diwali this year. It's a known quantity to us of what that would look like. And I, I would support 
yeah, increasing that, that fund. And it is just a matter of where it comes from. And I would caution against doing it from the downtown just because of, of what we talked about before this, those are high impact events um, that are really cornerstones. Not only does it, you know, it serves many, many of our residents, but it also serves to bring people into Sunnyvale um, who come from elsewhere to enjoy our city and, you know, spend their money <laughs> and, uh, it's great relations. It looks great for the city. So I, I want to keep those um, definitely. Uh, as for the mid-autumn festival, it is so worthwhile and, it, and it's hard um, to make these decisions, ob obviously, for many reasons. But I would love to see, I, I wouldn't mind seeing and saying like, yeah, let's let's do, let's fund you at a thousand and, and then see how this goes this year as you transition it into a community event. And then since we are going for, or we're going to discuss, like, do we raise the amount of money that we have for these grants in the future? That would be the opportunity where we would have to say, well, we're going to try to build in an opportunity for you to grow this event and be able to, um, you know, continue to do that in, in the next year. And I, I would feel comfortable um, doing that, but not the downtown. But other than that, I'm very comfortable with staff recommendation on everything else. Again, the neighborhood, um, we are fully funding and you love to see it. It's a basically fully funding. And uh, for the rest of it, it all makes a lot of sense to me. Very sound reasoning, lots of thoughtfulness behind it and very appreciative uh, for this and, and to our community members for having submitted such great applications overall. But how do you feel about that, Council Member Dean? Member Dean? Thank you. Uh, no, I mean, that totally tracks. And uh, let me first say, I appreciate uh, the mayor's question and, count and staff's information on, on uh, the multicultural event. Uh, looking forward to a snappy name on that as well. I'll, I'll start thinking too, and maybe I can come up with a good dad joke or pun that works. Uh, but yeah, I appreciate that information. Although, and while it is important that as a city, we're you know attacking this issue from multiple sides, so it's good that that's happening. But I would still like to see that increase to the Diwali event, um, just especially because the community that serves so directly is one that I believe is so important to the city. And uh, to Councilmember Cisneros' point, yeah, that totally tracks. And you know what? I'm I'm comfortable with that too. I mean, if you believe that that's it's best to you know preserve that those downtown events, especially as are totally fine with that. I mean, I'm comfortable as well funding uh, you know the I'm trying to remember the exact event name so I get it right. Uh, the Mid Autumn Festival. Uh, at a thousand, and then increasing Diwali celebrations to two thousand five hundred. Uh, and if there are no other changes that you would like to see, I'm happy to make a motion uh, to that extent. Okay, then uh, I'm ready with the motion there. If that's the go, go right ahead. Okay, uh, and then uh, let me just get the. Okay, so I move alternative two: take other actions determined by the subcommittee, uh, which would be to recommend funding levels outlined in the 2022 grant application summary table, which uh, be submitted to council for final approval with the modification of increasing the Diwali event funding to 3,500 and decreasing mid-autumn to 1,000. Okay. And council member Cisneros? I second. Okay. Uh, clerk, can you conduct a roll call vote? Council member Dean? Yes. Council member Cisneros? Yes. The motion passes two to zero. Wonderful. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I think that's all of our business. Uh, so I thank you for, uh, and, and just to kind of talk about next steps uh, when this comes in front of council, uh, I'll let the two of you work out who's going to talk about. So there's there needs to be a subcommittee report. So uh, you, the two of you should work out who's going to do that. And then uh, hopefully we will have a, a third person uh, part of the subcommittee uh, when we appoint in January. But, but when this comes back to council for our final recommendation, um, someone should give a summary and then the second person can give any additional color. But with that, I think uh, staff has all they need, correct? Good. So we will go ahead and adjourn the meeting at 2.42 p.m. Thanks for joining. Good Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everybody. Thanks.